Geert Wilders has been playing the long game. The Dutchman has been in politics for over 20 years and is now making a move on the country's leadership. With policies as shocking as his dyed blonde hair, he's riding the wave of populist and nationalistic sentiment felt on both sides of the Atlantic. This is our country and I will not be silenced by no one. In 2016, Geert Wilders released his PVV Party's manifesto. On it, he lists de-Islamization of the Netherlands, zero asylum seekers, and a ban on mosques and the Quran. But, like many of those who voted for Brexit and for Trump, he also has support from the disenfranchised, blue-collar workers concerned about their jobs and welfare. You cannot call Wilders either right-wing or left-wing. People call him far-right, but you could as well say he's also focusing on those who are less well-off or who've lost their jobs and the elderly. That's Karina Roo. I'm a Bloomberg government reporter in the Netherlands. This is how an anti-Islam, anti-EU firebrand rose to threaten one of the most liberal countries in the world. Born to Dutch Indonesian heritage, Wilders spent some of his early years traveling to Israel and the Middle East. Entering politics in the 90s, he was elected to the city council of Utrecht, living in a poor and predominantly Muslim neighborhood where he claims he was robbed. In 2008, Wilders commissioned the anti-Islam film Fitna to widespread condemnation. He became a target for death threats and receives round-the-clock police protection. He's since been taken to court numerous times for inciting discrimination. The latest resulted in conviction, but no sentence. What we've noticed in the polls is that it looks like he has gained from being taken to court. At the last trial, he was basically blaming our judges, saying they were prejudiced, and that, as a result, all his supporters were actually standing trial. What's so at odds for most is that for centuries, the Netherlands has been a byword for liberalism, religious tolerance, and openness to trade, making the rise of Wilders all the more remarkable. So Turkey, stay away from us. You are not welcome here. In the run-up to the election, he started leading in the polls and he's employed smart tactics to push his platform. We are now being threatened by mass immigration. Wilders is very strategic on how he deals with the media. He chooses to give mainly one-on-one -on -one interviews so he's not showing up in TV programs with other politicians. He uses Twitter a lot, sometimes five, ten tweets a day. And he's also not afraid to say inflammatory things. Being under 24-hour protection and unable to campaign conventionally also helped Wilders get ahead of his opponents in developing an online platform, leveraging his position in protective custody to enforce his imprisonment in his own country. However, the biggest barrier to Wilders becoming prime minister may be Wilders himself. His single-minded style isn't really compatible in the Dutch political system, where two to three party coalition governments have become the norm since the Second World War. The majority of rivals have ruled out working with him, which makes his chances of becoming leader minimal. What you see is that other political parties, uh, mainly the established parties, are taking over parts of Geert Wilder's opinions, especially when it comes to, for instance, immigration or Islam. Established parties take a much tougher stance than they used to do in the past. Whether in power or not, Wilders has had a forceful impact on Dutch politics.